Okay, so we've talked about how in the past the universe was hotter and denser, and that's what a cosmologist means by the Big Bang. But let's get serious, right? That popular picture of the Big Bang being the start of time itself, that we can go back, and there's a time before which there wasn't even a before. Was there really a really, really a Big Bang? Was there really a beginning of the universe? That's a very complicated question. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I'm on pretty firm ground here when I say that nobody really knows. Nobody really knows what happened at the start of the universe, and nobody really knows what happened before the start of the universe. There's plenty of speculation and sort of uh, even you know crazy dreams of what kind of uh, things could have happened before the universe formed. What we do know is that if you take our standard cosmological picture, and that's just based on Einstein's general theory of relativity, and you write it in a form that describes the universe as we know it, and you wind the clock back, and as we've already said, you go back in time, objects get closer and closer together. And what you find, of course, is as you push all the way back, the distance between objects, that goes to zero, the density of the universe goes to infinity. This is this thing, as you know, people call the singularity. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that turned up in cosmology pretty early on, like 1920s, 1930s. And then there was quite a bit of effort to try and say, okay, when you get an infinity as an answer in a physical problem, it usually means you've made some sort of weird assumption. Yeah, I think this is very important to get over, right? Singularity doesn't mean mystical, mysterious object. It means your equations have screwed up. Right, so then the question was, what assumption are we making that's making this singularity turn up in our equations? And if we relax those assumptions, what's going to happen? So there are a couple of things like uh, maybe the pressure of the stuff in the universe when you try to push in on it will actually, instead of the universe just going to zero, going to a big uh, bang, if we ran the clock backwards, it would just bounce. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the bounce idea is, is very popular, but, the, you know, the question of whether or not you could do that with pressure as we, we understood it in the early days, um, it, you know, it was, again, very hand-wavy kind of, of issue. What really changed the picture was quantum mechanics, of course, the mm. physics of the universe of the very small. And in everyday sort of situations, we can keep gravity, which describes, you know, the, the attraction between massive objects, and quantum mechanics, which describes the universe on very small scales, as being very different things. You can treat gravity over here, quantum mechanics over there. At the early universe, we know that densities were immensely high. We know that gravitational fields were immensely strong. So we know that gravity and quantum mechanics were both sort of playing a role in the mm. very, very early universe. And Einstein's equations don't have that quantum aspect. It's important to realize just how we really are sent towards quantum mechanics. So an awful lot of the attempts to do this without quantum mechanics, you know, pressure, or maybe the universe isn't perfectly smooth and that... that those those ideas kind of got killed off in the 60s by what are called the singularity theorems, which says, you know, these singularities aren't that easy to avoid. You need to almost certainly do something that rewrites the rules of general relativity. We need to take Einstein's theory and do something else. And obviously the, the biggest, not whole, but the biggest thing that seems incomplete about Einstein's theory is that it's not a quantum theory. It's not a theory that agrees with our best idea about how small things work. Yep. And of course, this is what stops us pushing uh, our theories backwards, right? We can we understand the universe um, from very early on. By, by winding the clock backwards, we can go through the different stages of the universe. We understand the universe today. We can wind it back a day, a, a year, a billion years. We see the temperature goes up, you know, and then the densities go up. And, and you can push way, way back to a point where the universe was this burning furnace producing the early elements. But we do eventually hit this point where we know that quantum mechanics and relativity must be playing a, an important mm. part and they don't gel together because it's not a quantum theory. Gravity is not a quantum theory. And we can't look no further. Look no further. <laughs> <laughs> we can't see any further right. into the Big Bang. So theoretically, we have a stumbling block that we can't push past. And at, at some level, it is a, that's where the speculation begins. We, we can sort of jerry-rig quantum mechanics and gravity together and sort of ponder about how we would see through the Big Bang. Okay, so here's here's one way I think about this and something that's a bit interesting. It's a bit more for me than just we don't know past a certain point. It seems to me that 
whenever a beginning turned up in someone's model, it was something they discovered there. They didn't try to sort of stick it in. It just kept turning up, right? It turned up in the earliest models. Hey, maybe pressure will get rid of it. Maybe this will get rid of it. Maybe that'll get rid of it. And they kept coming back. And we've had all these ideas about how to get rid of it, but it's still a bit hazy. So that's an interesting sort of scenario that the beginning keeps turning up where Uh, we don't want it. But I think you have to be very careful with your language. When you say beginning, you basically mean an important point for this universe it doesn't necessarily mean an ultimate beginning, the time equals zero point, okay? It's a, that where we start talking about the physics of our universe. But again, however that's attached to what came before is still an unknown. Okay, so there's always the possibility that our picture of our bit of the universe is actually embedded in some bigger picture. But that the beginning, which sounds big and, and important, is actually just a, a sort of a local beginning. The, the point of Einstein's theory is that every time you solve Einstein's theory properly about space and time, you're talking about the whole of space and time. And so it is the kind of theory where you could describe an absolute beginning of the universe. But then you've got this question as you keep coming back to. We've got our little model here and it seems to be doing nicely around here. Is it the whole story or is it just some piece of the puzzle? Yeah, um, and I, I, again... I don't think anybody really knows. Mm. But what, whatever process there was at the start, whatever process that resulted in the beginning of this universe, it still was special in some sense. We don't understand that. Mm. Entropy, I'm going to raise that word. Be, and we, uh, we all love the word entropy. And I'm going to say disorder and, uh, and freak out all the physicists out there. We know, we know what entropy means. We, means that, we mean that essentially useful energy is... Um, as entropy increases, useful energy decreases. So a, a universe runs down. And we'll mm-hmm. talk about the heat death of our universe at another point. If our universe is somehow a continuation of an earlier universe, you, you can't beat the laws of thermodynamics easily. Uh, and so this notion that this disorder, this constant rundown, um, if it happened in the, the previous universe, then it mm-hmm. must have basically continued into this universe. And we look at the birth of our universe, the early times of our universe, and it was in a low entropy state. It was in a state which had lots of energy to power us, to power stars, to power life, and for us to be here. So quite how we ended up with this sort of particular property to to our universe is a bit of a mystery. Yeah, so the easy thing we can do, whenever you do a physical model of anything, you have the laws that govern how it changes so if you have a model of the solar system how they pull on each other with gravity but you need a bit more you need to put in some initial conditions tell me how the uh, system started and then the laws tell you how it changes with time and the easy thing to do with entropy would say all right well we've got this thing that looks like a beginning we'll use that for our initial conditions if we make that a low entropy highly ordered state then hey presto we've got the universe we see around us And if you want to try and push things back further, things get a bit awkward because uh, you would seem to need an even more audit, even more low entropy state as you go back. And so this, it looks like entropy has just started off at a certain level and then uh, increased from there. The order in the universe started a certain way. And that this throws a spanner in the works of uh, anyone trying to tell a story of what happened before the Big Bang. Of course, there's always a get out clause with entropy right? You could have created this universe with very low entropy, as long as you create other universes with very high entropy at the same time. (laughs) This could be this notion that we are not the only universe around. And this might be a useful place, place to take a break and come back and ponder the multiverse.